<laughs> All it took was two seconds for that to get wet. It is 20 past 10 and I am just about to go and sit in a cafe for about an hour and a half before a call that I have at midday. And after that, back on the DIY. I've also got a horrendous cold and I feel dreadful. When I got back from the cafe earlier, I was feeling so awful that I went straight back to bed. So what I've got for you today is a bunch of footage that I've taken from the last few days of things that I've done that I haven't yet shared with you. And I had to tell you that because otherwise you might be thinking, how many times a day does this woman change her clothes? One of the other jobs that I had to do today was replace the battery in this sensor, which is part of my house alarm. I've already deactivated it from the system, so when I open this, it's not going to set the alarm off. Devices like this often have a tamper alarm inside so that when you try and remove them, if you haven't taken them off the system, it will set the house alarm off. So I've already done that part and now I need to take this apart. It's a little bit tricky. Oh. <laughs> well, there we go. Oh, I'm breaking everything. That little spring just there, that's the tamper alarm. So when it pops off, that spring comes out and that's what sets the alarm off. The battery is what I need to change. This has run out of battery and so it's no longer working. And to get it working again, I'm just going to replace the battery. I don't fuss around uh, with batteries that are not very good quality. So I always just go with one that I know is going to last a long time so I don't have to keep doing this. Now that's replaced, I'm going to pop it back on and then I add it back onto the system. I'll do that separately. I just wanted to show you this little job that I did. This is a little Sunday job, proper weekend DIY. In there, spring goes back. <laughs> Ideally, I could have just, uh, I could have still on a step ladder, but if I do that, then you can make things more difficult. Okay, just did that nice and gently with the drill, because I don't want to over screw it. So there we go, I'm going to add that back into the system now. So I just replaced that battery and the unit itself just isn't turning back on. So I think the unit itself is broken. So having finished that job now, I have another job to do. I just did a bit of rudimentary investigation and discovered that this part of the insides has come away from the circuit board. So I'm just going to go and get my soldering iron, stick that back on and see if I can fix it and save myself some money. I tried that. And it still didn't work. The light is still not coming on, so I'm going to be buying a new one. This is where the shelves will go. I don't know how many I'm going to make. I'm probably going to try and fit that clothes basket in the bottom part. But I can't build the shelves too far out because the shutters are here. So they can come no further out than there, which is actually not to the edge of here, but maybe about here. So they'll be slightly recessed, but I don't mind that. Let's work out how to install shelves. I just had a flashback of something <laughs> I was reminded of when I was thinking about the fact that we've reached 5,000 subscribers on this channel. And it was speaking with a colleague in a job that I used to do. And she'd asked me, because I was sort of expressing that I wasn't really sure that I wanted to work there forever and I kind of wanted other things. And she's like, well, what do you want to do? I said, well, I, do you know what? I kind of want to be a YouTuber. And this was this was years ago. So this was like five or six years ago, maybe longer. And she laughed at me <laughs> and she was like, yeah, everybody wants to be a YouTuber these days. It's so silly. It's not a real job. And I was like, oh, ouch. Like it was something that was really important to me to create content and to be putting something out there that's going to be useful to people. I didn't know, you know, what it would look like at that point, but it, it just felt like it was something I really wanted to do. And of course, you know, I've built a community on all of these other social media channels, firstly TikTok and then Facebook and then Instagram and YouTube is the sort of the last place that I've started to, to build a community. But um, somehow it feels the most important because of that conversation and oh, this is making me emotional thinking about it. it may, I feel like I'm a YouTuber now <laughs> and she can screw herself. All right, Sharon, it's a real job, okay? I'm breaking my heart. So I thought this was really interesting. I was at my sister's yesterday and I noticed that her stop tap is in the floor 
Lots of people have it maybe near the door in a cupboard, but hers is actually hidden underneath the floorboards. I've never seen it in this location before, so I just, I thought I'd share that in case you also thought it was interesting. <laughs> also, this is definitely somewhere to stash the cash. Here we are, it's absolutely pouring with rain and I'm out in the front garden because I'm measuring up an area to hold a water butt in my front garden. I'm doing this for a video that I'm making with a company. It doesn't matter that it's raining, I still need to do this work. So that's why I'm out here doing it right now. This is the space. I've measured it this way and this way to work out what kind of space I might need for the water butt and what's just gonna fit in this space in the garden. The garden is quite small. Um, so I think 60 centimeters is the width of the water butt. So I'm going to make something that is a minimum 70 centimeters wide so that there's space either side. <laughs> and if you can't see me, that's because little droplets are falling on the camera. Oh. I've also just been measuring the width of my uh, guttering because I'm going to be buying some more to redirect the guttering down into the water butt. Which is that one just there. <sighs> so I'm going to go inside with my measurements and I'm going to draw something out that I think will fit because that will help me work out what materials I need to make this project happen. I'm going to sit and draw a picture of what I want because from that I can work out what sort of length of wood I might need. Let me show you the process of how I work it out. So I'm just taking this blank sheet of paper. I quite like the ones that have the uh, the little dots on, makes it easier to work with. And the water butt that I am using is 60 centimetres wide. So let's draw six centimetres. And I'm going to draw a square. Obviously my water butt is round, but this just gives you an idea of the space that it's taking up. That is the size of my water butt. I think I need at least five centimetres on either side for it to not be too small. I also don't want it to be so, so big that it's taking up too much space. Let's say that we give it five centimetres on every side. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to find out how wide the decking boards are that I want to buy, because that will tell me how many decking boards I need to fit in the width. It may also help me to see if perhaps my decking needs to be a little bit wider because ideally I wouldn't be cutting down um, a decking board. I would prefer just to use whole pieces. So I'm going to research that. So the decking boards that I have so far put into my basket are 28 times 140 times 3600. So the 3600 will be 3 meters 60 for the length. I don't know if I might need a different length yet or not. It depends on how many pieces I need. The 14, 140 is basically, it's 14 centimeters wide. And 2.8 is 2.8 centimeters thick. Since I'm drawing this to a smaller scale, I know that each board will be 1.4 centimeters wide. I want to have about half a centimeter in between each board. So four boards with 0.5 in between each board would be 56.5. This isn't wide enough for what I needed, so I thought I would use five boards. This would make the total platform 72 centimetres wide and would give me a clearance of six centimetres on every side. Since I want the platform to be a square, I can assume that both the width and the length are going to be 72 centimetres. Because of this, I can time 72 by the number of boards that I need, which is five, and this will give me the total length of the decking that I need. And I have to say, this couldn't have turned out more perfectly because 5 times 72 is actually 360. That's 360 centimetres or 3 metres 60, which if you recall is the length of the decking piece that I was going to buy. Therefore, I only have to buy one piece of decking to make this entire platform. I don't know about you, but I find that perfect and satisfying. The only thing that I really did get up to today, even with my cold, was to spend some time in the garden. The weather's starting to look up, so it's really nice just to be able to spend some time outside. And here I was just chopping off all of the deadheads of my rose bush. This allows for better growth of the new buds as they come out. Also, the entire time that I was on this ladder, I was humming, Dumb ways to die, so many dumb ways to die. It's lucky I'm not scared of heights. I also spent this afternoon cleaning out the filter of my pond. 
which I didn't catch any footage of because I'm feeling so poorly. But I figured you'd forgive me. <laughs>